Good morning, Tower Grove. Have we had a good week this week? All right, let's, are we glad to be in the house of the Lord today? All right, let's get on our feet and worship the Lord this morning. How many of us believe that our God is the God of wonders? Our God is the God of all the galaxies. Our God is the ruler over all. When we have troubles like them going on in the world this week, this is what we can sing out. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. Sing out. Here we go. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy. Lord of, you sing this part. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, oh, you are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. excited to see what God is going to do in your life this morning. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, it says this, there is none holy like the Lord. Do you really believe that? Well, we really need to hold on to that today. We have fellow brothers and sisters around the world, especially in Ukraine right now. Our Christian brothers and sisters, you don't know, but you will know when you get to heaven that are faced with dire adversity. Well, a little later, a little later in our worship time, we're going to take some extended time to pray for Ukraine, for President Zelensky. But we're also going to pray for Russia, that God will work in President Putin hard. Do you believe what God's word says? It says, the heart of a king is like channels of water in the hands of God. 
That's how powerful God is. God has the power to change Putin's heart. Well, this morning we want to pray for our fellow loved ones, our friends, and who have friends there and family members. You know, Ukraine people are spread out throughout the world. They're concerned about their loved ones back home. Well, we want to come alongside of them and pray with them this morning. Well, right now we are going to continue in our worship by collecting our tithes and offerings. Do you know giving to God is a form of worship? So if you do not yet give your tithe to God, you should take a step of faith. Say, God, I'm not sure how I can do this, but I'm going to do it because I believe and trust in you. And I promise his words say he will open up the windows of heaven. You will be overflowed with blessings from him. We don't give to get blessed, but when we give, we are blessed by God. So this morning, Father, I pray that you will draw us into your presence today. Whatever we're faced with, whatever things are burdens on our heart, I pray that we'll be able to cast them aside this morning and that we will worship you with a pure heart. I pray that Words of encouragement will be shared around the world with your people. Father, I, I stand up on this. You said if your people will call by your name, will humble themselves. So this morning, I pray that we'll humble ourselves before you. I pray that you will be glorified in all that we do this morning. I pray that your word will go forth and prick a heart and save them from their sins. I pray, God, that you give us a cheerful heart as we give to you what you have entrusted us with. I pray that you will use it here in St. Louis and around the world for your name. We ask this in your son, precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe that God is our way maker. He clears the path for us so we can go down. He makes the path easy. Here we go. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every life. I worship I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 That is the best part right here even when I don't see it you're working 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. You believe that this morning? Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You ain't maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I worship you. I worship you. Amen. Well, good morning, family. How are you today? Um, I have some amazing announcements for us today. Um, but first, I'd like to talk about um, one of the ways that our church is, is really making an impact Um those that may or may not know, and I know some do because they have some some uh, children that participate, but we have been able to partner with Gateway Science Academy for a, a co-op, uh, uh, a sports ministry, a wrestling program that we were able to help. Well, uh, over the weekend, we were able to go to St. Charles, and 17 of those children that we were able to help um, ended up taking a medal. We had six, or sorry, three in sixth place, four in fifth place, two in fourth place, one-third two, or I'm sorry, four second places and three state champions all from that program. One of those state champions was actually Mr. Uh, Eugene Holker's son, Eldon. So um, we had an amazing opportunity to be able to serve and just completely for free be able to open up and, and be able to see where God is working and join in, as Henry Blacksby would say. So as amazing as it is, um, we have more things that are coming up. It's hard to believe, right? We have more and more things, but Onto our announcements. So our fish fry. So every year we have our fish fry, which is a huge um, fundraiser for our, our youth group. Um, it will be every Friday, March 4th through April 8th. You may have seen the, the signs around the park. $10, just so uh, in case anyone's wondering, we are still accepting soda and water uh, donations if you'd like to drop those off. Um, act quick. We already have pre-orders coming in, and uh, I believe we had a pre-order of 50 plates already for this next Friday. So... So make sure you're there. Make sure you're able to be a part of it. We'd love for you. Um, it's drive through right now and until we're able to open up for indoor seating. Next slide. Um, our banquet for Jesus. So uh, as Pastor Mike talked about, this is something that we ask that everyone be in prayer about. For those that did sign up, you may notice that the sign-up sheet has been taken down only because we've taken it down to be able to send out emails to everyone. So you should have, if you did sign up to volunteer, you should be getting an email from, um, from Catherine detailing some directions. It is going to be an amazing event, one that we have already gotten a lot of people to confirm that are going to be here, and we're just really excited that we're able to bless those on March 16th um, with a amazing meal as well as a uh, an amazing night. It's going to be one that uh, that I don't think anyone here is ever going to forget. Um, I've been now given the green light to say that our MC for the event will be Mr. Tim Azell. Um, so as you guys have all seen on on TV, and our guest speaker will be. Um, St. Louis City Chief of Police, uh, Mr. John Hayden. So we have that as well as a 17-piece big band that is going to be performing almost completely at cost for us. So it's going to be an amazing event. It's going to be a beautiful night full of, full of uh, fellowship as well as sharing God's blessings. So very excited, and hopefully if you are so interested in signing up, let us know quickly so we can get you on those email lists. Next slide. Break Trail. So um, our youth group every year goes down to Camp Barnabas on uh, March 20th through the 25th. Permission slips for that are due this week. So if you have anyone that's interested in going, it's completely free of charge. But it is a whole week long. We're able to go and help out uh, Camp Barnabas, which is a Christian special needs camp. Um, it is an amazing opportunity. Our, our fish fry proceeds are able to help us pay for that so all the students can go for free. It's a great time for those who have been, and it's uh, – We've even been invited to come back in the summer to be camp counselors. So very excited about that as well. Um, 
our Annie Armstrong. So every year we do an offering, our Easter offering for Annie Armstrong for North American Missions. Um, our goal this year is $6,000. We've seen in the past that we've had goals that we're able to surpass and blow past. So we would love to see that. Um, if you do want to specifically donate to Annie Armstrong, please just denote that on your tithes and offerings. We'll make sure that it gets in that appropriate fund. Uh, we know that now more than ever, international missions are, are so important. Um, I personally, uh, I, I, you know, we pray for, for um, President Putin and for everyone over in Ukraine, but I um, have friends that are currently headed to the Baltic Sea right now, right, to go in, in response to these things. So this is affecting hundreds of thousands of lives around the world, and we know that no matter what, kingdoms will rise and kingdoms will fall, armies will be amassed, but our God sits on the throne. His will will be done. Um, so, thank you so much, family. Thank you so much for being here, and we look forward to continuing worshiping with you. Thank you. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ We're going to have prayer time after this If you feel the urge, just go ahead and come forward Behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and train them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I imagine the Lord, Jesus, standing in our midst with his arms open wide. And how it run to him. Isn't he wonderful? Sing alleluia. Christ is risen. When I see your face, Lord, I will sing this. Bow down before him. For he is Lord of all. Sing alleluia. Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't he wonderful? Sing Alleluia! Christ is risen. Bow down. Christ is real. 
the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to. blood of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 12, Paul says this, if one member suffers, the whole body Now I'm talking about God's universal church. Because we have brothers and sisters suffering around the world, we should suffer along with them. And that's why today we do want to take some extended time to pray for President Zelensky and, and for the Christians in this nation and for his leaders, his cabinet. We want to pray for President Putin as well, that God will change his heart. God will raise up other leaders around him, surround him to change him. And then at the same time, when we're finished praying for that, we want to take some time to pray for this banquet for Jesus. I believe that this banquet has the potential to be our marching orders out into the world to manifest the love of Christ. God will use many things that in our, that's in our path if we will allow him. The church needs to be mobilized. The church needs to be unified. The church needs to come together as one body of Christ and touch the world. Well, if you consider yourself part of the body, God is calling you. So to this morning, the leaders, we're going to be up here. You can come pray with us. You can come pray alone. But you need to pray. If you don't need to pray, there's something wrong in your life. Because there's never a time that we don't need to pray. We all need to pray at all times. That's what God said, pray at all times, at all times. So I'm going to lead us, and then the altar will be available for extended time this morning. Father in heaven, we believe that you created the world. We believe everything in the world all that it contains that belongs to you. We believe that the king, our president, our leader, heart is like water in your hand. We believe that you have the power to allow Ukraine to stand fast. This morning, they need to be encouraged. They need to know that even though we are on the other side of the world, that we love them and we are praying for them. I pray for President Zelensky, God, for his courage that he has. That he said, we are going to stand. I'm not looking for a way out. I'm looking to stand. I pray that you are working his heart in his life. I pray for the leaders that surrounded him. I pray that they give him good, wise counsel to make wise decisions. I also pray for President Putin, God, that you would work in his heart, that you would change him, show him 
your power. Show him who you are. God, I also pray for the, U the UN. Pray for America, that you give us wisdom. God, we'll be wise, that you'll unify us to make wise decisions. What should we do? I remember in Scripture, King, King Asa, when he cried out to you, you gave him great victory. But when he did not seek you for counsel, he was defeated. So God, we're asking the Almighty God this morning that you give us wise counsel, that you lead, that you direct, that you guide. Because when you do that, you will fulfill your plan. I pray for our banquet for Jesus. God, I pray that you will use this banquet here in the city and around the metro area to change lives. I pray that it will be the love of Christ being manifested. It will not be about Tower Grove. It will not even be about Tim, Ezel, or either Chief Hayden. It will be about you. And I pray that you will use it in our hearts to shape us, to change us, to mold us, that we will become men and women of God who loves you more than we love anything else. God, I believe wholeheartedly you have left the remnant at Tower Grove to change the world. So I pray that your Holy Spirit will speak and lead and direct us to do the work that you call us to do. We need you. Therefore, we invite you in everything that we do. Hear our prayers this morning, O oh Lord. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen.
for your goodness. I thank you for the power of your resurrection. I thank you for allowing us to be here at the time as this. I thank you for placing this church in this location where you have placed it. And Father, we see you working. I pray that you open our eyes, that we would join in with you. Whatever you're doing, wherever it's at, it may not look like what we think. Oh God, it's not about us. It's all about you. So I pray that you will do that in your people who are called out by your name. Let today be a day that someone here or at home heart is changed under the power of your word. We thank you, Jesus, and may you be glorified in all that we do. Amen. I want to take a quick moment. We're going to sing about God's grace. And we just had a, had a long time of prayer, and we have to believe in God's grace to answer those prayers. How many, how many are thankful for unanswered, for unprayed prayers? How about that? For God's grace intervenes with our, without our, even our knowledge. How many of you know Pastor Mike had an incident a little over a week ago? He was here last week. He told me he hit his head. He was fine. Didn't feel so good, but he felt okay. Then come midweek, things weren't so great, were they, Miss Ruth? Things were a little bit weird, right, pa right, Pastor Mike? The reason I'm giving this testimony is I know you won't. And the Lord answered prayer that wasn't prayed through His grace. very happy to have our pastor with us this morning. Amen. Just give God a praise offering for that. Thank you, Jesus, for your just marvelous grace. Marvelous grace of a loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilt. Grace, grace, God's grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace that is greater than all our sin Sin and despair like the sea waves cold Threaten the soul with infinite loss Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold Points to the refuge, the mighty cross Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous, infinite, match 
this grace freely bestowed on all who believe you that are longing to see his face will you this moment his grace receive oh grace grace god's grace grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace that is greater than all our sin grace grace god's grace grace that will and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace that is greater than all our sin amen give the lord a praise offering this morning as a side note, it's not part of the message, but I want to ask you a question. We were just singing that last hymn, and it said that grace is greater than all of our sins. So I have a question for you. Do you really believe that the grace that you were just singing about is greater than all the sins of President Putin, President Zelensky, even President Biden. Then make it personal. What about your family members? Is that grace greater than all of their sins? If that is true and you really believe that, there's hope. Do you believe there's hope? The only reason there's no hope is because of you. God has already made a way for hope. We look at people's sins and we think there's no way God can save that person. Well, I want to encourage you today, that's not true. God has the power to save anyone and everyone. He said, you think he's slow. But he's waiting. He's given your family members, your friend, the opportunity to change their ways. Well, this morning, our title for the sermon is Characteristics of a Disciple. Over the next few weeks, I am going to be preaching on the Beatitudes. Today, I'm just going to attempt to lay you a foundation for the Beatitudes. And the scripture we're going to be in today, the overview is Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 through 12. And it says this, if you don't mind standing as we read these verses, in the next few weeks we are going to dive deep into them. So I want to ask you to do something. Starting today, 
Start reading and studying and praying through the Beatitudes and ask God to give you wisdom to understand them, but also to apply them to your life. And it says, now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and began to teach them saying. I want to help you lay a foundation. Go back and read chapter 4. It will help you to see all the things that are taking place before this happens right here. And it says, now when Jesus, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. This morning, are you thirsting after righteousness? For you will be satisfied. See, one of the things that happens in our world, we thirst after so many different things. And we wonder why we never are fulfilled, and that thirst remains. It never gets quenched. So you're thinking like, you remember back in the day when they had the, the commercial about the orange soda? I remember going and getting me an orange knee-high soda, and you thought it just quenched your thirst. Well, God says this, if you seek and thirst for righteousness, you will be satisfied. How many of you desire to be satisfied? I want to be satisfied. Well, God says, listen, thirst after righteousness, and you will be satisfied. He says, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. This is scary. For they will see God. So you telling me if your heart is not right, you won't see God? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people, all right, Christian, you don't like this, when people what? Insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Not because of you now. Then he says, rejoice and be glad. For your reward in heaven is great. For in this same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. See, our reward is where? In heaven. And it will be great. Not good. It will be great. Father, I, I pray this morning that your Holy Spirit will fill each of us. Father, I pray that we will be able to set aside all the things in the world right now and that we will focus on you. But I also pray for someone that's not a disciple yet, that you will open their heart, open their mind to receive what you have in store for them today. Oh God, give me insight into your word as I attempt to preach it and teach it. It's in Jesus precious name I pray. Amen. All right. The Beatitudes, they describe future and present, present blessings of the kingdom. I believe you and I want to grow. If we do, let's start this morning by allowing the Beatitudes to sink into our heart and mind, and allow them to become characteristics of our lives. Jesus, he described eight traits of a person that is blessed by God. You need to make sure this morning he is describing you. There are future promises of God, but also present assurances that you are a child 
of God. See, I want you to go back and read chapter 4. This is why. Because just like the crowd that gathered and listened to Jesus' teaching back over in Matthew 7, 28 and 29, the crowd was astonished, it says. The teaching this morning is for disciples of Christ. But it is also for non-disciples. I pray that many will come and hear what God has to say each Sunday. I'm sure within that crowd, it said it was a multitude. And I'm sure this morning, even in here, and people that watching, many of them don't know Jesus. I'm sure there's skeptics, doubters, some seekers, and some are just there because they were drugged or they followed the crowd. But here if Jesus, the preacher, finds a high mountain, he finds a high location on the mountain to teach his disciples. See, these disciples, they loved him. And the reason you know they loved him, they followed him. In chapter 4, Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, they were fishermen. As Jesus walked along the Sea of Galilee, Jesus called the two brothers to follow him. And he told them, listen, drop your nets, and I'm going to make you fishers of men. And they immediately walked away from their career as fishermen to follow Jesus. And a little later, as Jesus was walking, he ran into two more brothers, John and James, who were fishermen with their dad. They dropped their nets and left their father to follow Jesus. What about you? Have you dropped the things of the world and left them completely behind to follow Jesus? Are you trying to bring them along with you on the journey? See, this serves as a reminder, and it should be an encouragement to us, that God has the power to take humble followers like fishermen and like you and like me and create a full-fledged disciple. But the question is this morning, do you really want to be a full-fledged disciple? So a disciple is a follower of Christ. That means he or she is willing to set all else aside and say, Jesus, where you go, I go. What you do, I do. What you say, I say. Is that you today? See, a lot of people want to follow Jesus, but a lot of people don't want to be a disciple of Jesus. A disciple is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you your life. Laying down of the old life. And allowing God to give you a brand new life in Christ. But I want to encourage you. And this is what's scary about all of this. Do you know the life of a di disciple is much greater than any life that you can create for yourself? Now, is it scary? Most definitely. But it's a blessed life. A life Feel with the power of God. You know, we sing a lot of songs. If you really believe what I'm saying, what can't, or what cannot God, what he can't do in your life. There should be giants all around here this morning. Giants, spiritual giants. That's changing the world. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives within you. The only reason we're not doing what God has called us to do, not because of Jesus, is completely because of us. 
See, there was a multitude of others standing and listening to the teaching of Jesus. You remember, he said, he went up on a high mountain, right? Then the disciples, they came near and, and sat so they could hear what he was saying. But there was many, many other people standing around. Jesus had grown a large fame. Why? He had healed a lot of people. He had gave them a lot of things. So the crowd followed him. And now he is sitting up on a mountain. Many were seeking to receive something from him. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, it says this, And Jesus says he went out throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them. So he had fame. So people followed him for what they could get. Unfortunately, things have not changed in the church today. Today we see the same. This may scare someone today. Do you know all church members are not disciples? Many are looking for something from Jesus, but are unwilling to follow and obey his teachings. What about you? An older friend of mine is up in Wisconsin. He said, tell Mike he need to preach the Ten Commandments. And he said that back some months ago. What do you think about the Ten Commandments? Do you think they're still relevant today? Well, I want to read you something just in case you don't believe it. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and through 20, it says this. Do not think that I come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to do what? Fulfill them. But truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, and not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. See, these be attitudes should be a blessing to you as they are in your life. They are distinguishing marks that identifies us as Christians. Sad to say, many claims that they believe in Jesus, but their daily decisions are not a reflection of Christ. Jesus said this, not Pastor Mike. Jesus said, on the last day, many will claim that they knew him. But in the reality, they didn't. There is no value in you standing before Christ on the last day saying, I knew him. I knew him. It won't help you. In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, it says, Not everyone who, who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father. Are you doing the will of God? Who is in heaven? On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? and do many mighty works in your name. And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That is scary. There's people in the church serving, doing a lot of stuff, but don't love Jesus. 
don't follow Jesus, don't obey Jesus. Well, I told you this, in the next weeks, this is going to be directed to us, for us to search our heart, really for us to allow God to search our hearts and see, are we really disciples of Christ? Or we have created our own society, what we believe. There must be evidence of God's grace working in our life. We need to ask our question, this question, am I living out these Christian principles each and every day? See, the Beatitudes is not the plan of salvation, but it is telling you what you should be doing as a Christian. Thomas Watson said this, if we do not imitate his life, we cannot be saved by his death. Don't be confused, though. You are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, not just attempting, attempting to imitate who Jesus was. You must come to a loving faith in Christ. And then, as 2 Corinthians 5.17 5, says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things began to pass away. And you began to look like Jesus. It don't happen on the outside. It happens where? In the inside. God must change your heart. See, the Beatitudes is a tool to help us discern our spiritual condition. You need to discern where you are spiritually. God's Word will help you do that. So you can ask your friends, and they will give you a good answer. But you want to check with Jesus. And the way we check with him is through his word and through talking with him. The kingdom of heaven can be received by only the spiritual bankrupt. In 5, 1 through 3, it says, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is them. Jesus was speaking directly to his disciples, but he was indirectly talking to the multitude that had followed him. As I said this morning, there are some probably here that have not accepted Jesus, that's not living like a disciple. Well, you still can hear this morning, but you need a starting place. And I talked to my good friend Spurgeon this week, and this is what he had to say about it. He said, Pastor Mike, the beatitude is first, because there's where we start with God, a ladder. If it is to be of any use, must have its first step near the ground or feeble climbers will never be able to mount. It would have been a grievous discouragement to struggling faith if the first blessing had been given to the peer in heart. How can you have a peer in heart before? You know who you are. To that excellence, the younger begin, beginner makes no claim while to poverty of spirit, he can reach without going beyond his line. The poor in spirit have nothing to offer in forming a relationship with Jesus except accepting his invitation of being adopted into the royal family and receiving all of the inheritance that's available to the family. Is that a blessing? Do you know when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are adopted into royalty? You come with nothing. You, leave, you get a chance to leave all your baggage, all your mess, all your garbage behind and start a brand new life of hope. Psalm 1-1 says, Blessed is the man 
who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, not, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, of scoffers, sorry. In verse 4 of my, uh, Matthew chapter 5, it says this, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. How many need comfort today? Do you know as a disciple of Christ, no matter what you're faced with, you have comfort in Christ? So whatever adversity is on your plate, and we know based on what James says, consider it all joy. Why? Because all of us are going to be faced with what? Various trials. And he's saying, listen, if you are my disciple, you can be comforted. Too many times, though, we start looking to the world for comfort. We start looking for these different things for comfort. And God is saying, comfort is in me. Comfort is in me. 2 Corinthians 6.10 says, As sorrowful, yet always, always rejoicing as poor, yet making many rich and having nothing, yet possessing Everything. Everything. In John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I have said to you. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will pray to the Father, and he shall send you another comforter who shall be with you, and what? Shall dwell with you forever. 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 God, I, I thank you. So whatever you have, do you know that's when we open up the altar every, mo every Sunday morning? So you can come and find comfort? So you can come and be encouraged? So you can come and lay all your burdens down to God? If we believe that we are the remnant, this altar should be full. We're it. We're it. Verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. See, Jesus was meek. He was strength under control. Poole said this, The meek who can be angry but restrain their wrath in obedience to the will of God and will not be angry unless they can be angry and not sin, nor will be easily provoked by others. If you go back and read the first earlier chapters, either three or four, and there's where right before all this started happening, guess who was tempting Jesus? Satan. He's saying, look, if you just do this, if you just bow down to me, I'll give you all the earth. Some of you are being tempted by the enemy. And that's where you need to cry out to him. See, we can only be meek, willing to control our desires for our rights and privileges because we are confident God watches out for us, that he will protect us. The promise they shall inherit the earth proves that God will not allow his meek ones to end up on the short end of the stick. See, you're thinking we're losing, right? You look at the world and you think we're, Christians are losing. We're not losing. God is putting things in order. He's getting ready to do what he's going to do. His plan is still mobilized going forward. The problem is too many Christians are going to end up over here. Well, I don't want to be over here. I want to be over here. I want to be, I want to be in the midst of what's going on. I want to be in the middle of the plan, standing strong, carrying it out having vigor and vitality and stamina for God. 
to those who are willing to be a disciple of Jesus will inherit the earth. In verse 6, Matthew, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. A longing that endures and can only be satisfied by God. Unfortunately, today we see it all around. Many Christians attempt to satisfy their hunger pains with success, material things, careers, happiness. And when we are not happy anymore, we think that God is not working. God never said that you will be happy. He said you can have joy. In Psalm 63, 1, it says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. Is this your prayer? My soul thirsts for you, God. My flesh faints for you, as in dry and weary land where there is no water. We look at our world and look dry, right? It looks like God is not here working. The barren places should teach us both to want most and to seek most what we need most. Did you hear that? These times, the barren places should teach us both to want most and to seek most what we need most. And that's God. In verse 7, blessed are the merciful so they shall receive mercy. See, mercy is not receiving what you deserve. The merciful one will show compassion. The merciful one shows care for the soul of others. The merciful one seeks to restore broken relationships. The merciful one seeks out those that weep and mourn. We should extend mercy. Why? Because we have all received mercy. Hmm. In Matthew 18, 23 to 35, it says this, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay his master, ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payments to be made. So the servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailer until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. See, this is for Christians here. Too many times we're walking around holding on to baggage where someone has insulted us and someone has wronged us. And we're refi we are refusing to let go of it. And God is saying to you, I have forgiven you of much. Who are you? to hold on with a grudge in your heart. And now it's wickedness and sin has fostered. And you claim that you love me. Well, if you love me, then you'll love your fellow brother and sister in Christ. In 
verse 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Oh, Father, I pray that we will see you. 1 John 1, 9 says, We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The pure in heart will have a greater joy and a greater intimacy with God. See, apart from God, there's, real, there's no real joy. Apart from God, there is no joy. You may find happiness for a little while, but your feelings will change quickly. See, the heart is deceitfully wicked and desperately sick. In verse 9, so we can move on, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Peacemakers have a passion for peace, like God. Do you know Jesus had peace? He said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Is that you? Forgive them. That person right now is ignorant to what they are doing. So I'm going to be a peacemaker with my fellow brother or sister in Christ. In Matthew 5, 10, and 12, our final verses, it says this, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. You know, I tell you weekly, I want to be accused of being like Jesus. I want to be accused. What about you? We say, well, I, I can't go and talk to that crowd because I may be persecuted. You should want to be persecuted against for Jesus' sake, though. So someone would say, you know, I don't agree with everything about him or her, but guess what? They love Jesus. And you know what? They love Jesus, and they have shown what? Kindness to me. See, that's one of the sad things about Christians. We're not kind. We're not kind. We're not loving. We want to beat them down. Jesus didn't beat them down. We should have a desire to manifest the love of Christ in us, in our hearts. We should be quickly to forgive, quickly to reconcile, quickly to be restored back to one another. The enemy found that out, and that's why we look at our families today, they are destroyed. Because we're like, I'm not forgiving them first. I'm going to be mad forever. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you. Falsely on my account. But listen, Christian, rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. Your reward is great in heaven. I think one of the big issues is we want it now. That commercial on television, it's my money. I want it now. And so that's what has happened. You want your reward now. God is saying, be patient. Be patient. I'm not going to give you something good. I have something great for you. He's saying to you, I have not seen, ear has not heard what I have in store for the ones who love me. The question is, Christian disciple, do you truly love Jesus? Let's pray. God, I thank you for your word. I pray if there's someone right now that has not allowed you to work in their heart, that you will save them, you will change them, you will shape them, you will mold them to fall in love with you. 
and for others that are called Christians already, that are your disciple, God, I pray, I pray that you will encourage us, that we will walk with you, that we will trust you, that we will take you at your word, and that we will be willing to forgive quickly. We will have mercy because you have had mercy on us. That we will walk the way you walk. We will talk the way you talk. And we will love the way you love. I pray for us, oh Lord. I pray that you will use our lives to change the world. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all i'll stand my soul lord to you surrendered all i am is yours do you mean it this morning let's stand so i'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all oh, i'll stand my soul lord to you surrendered all i am is yours jesus all i am is yours all i am We will surrender our lives completely. There's nothing that God won't do. Because there's nothing he cannot do in us. Let that be our marching orders today. May you have a blessed day. In Jesus' name. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all i'll stand my soul lord to you surrendered all i am is yours i'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned